Hi folks, I'm smoking a corn cob and in it I've got some of one of my favourite blends, Rustica. Someone recently contacted me by leaving a comment and mentioned that they wanted to know about pipe smoking. They were thinking of starting to smoke a pipe. And rather than try and explain things through comments or through email, I thought it was better to put some advice up online. I know a lot of there is a lot of advice already out there, but I think it's important that we have as much of that kind of thing as possible online. I know I've packed this a bit tight, so I'll just ease it a bit. That's better. The more advice we can get online, the better, because it gives people a chance to choose and hear different points of view. The first thing I've mentioned to anybody who's um, talking about wanting to smoke a pipe is really, are you smoking already? Are you smoking cigarettes, for example, or, or whatever? Because if you're not, then you need to think seriously about, do you really want to start smoking tobacco? I'm not suggesting that there's anything wrong with it, but you know, some people might feel that you shouldn't start smoking, especially if you're married or if you're at home or, you know, whoever you're living with might not appreciate it. So think carefully first about, do I want to do this? And if you then decide, yes, I've thought about it, I want to do this. Then the first thing you're going to need is a pipe. And I would suggest that you don't get an expensive pipe. Corn cobs could be had for a matter of five or ten pounds and are brilliant smokers and brilliant ones to start with and you can even get them so that they will take a, a small filter if not a corn cob if you want a briar then estate pipes that those are pipes that have been smoking smoked before and have been refurbished um, basket pipes, most proper tobacconists will have some um, pipes that have been put into the basket because they're out of date or, or whatever. Um, they tend to be cheap pipes and you should be able to get a pipe for about 20 to 30 pounds at the most. I wouldn't spend any more on a pipe and I wouldn't buy dozens of pipes to begin with. When you're thinking of tobacco, I'd have a word with whoever's in the shop that you buy it from, if you get it from a shop, and tell them that you're starting smoking. Can you suggest a tobacco that is reasonable to start with?
Now, I know you're living in Swindon, and I can't remember whether there are any tobacconists in Swindon that sell pipes and pipe tobacco. But if not, any supermarket will sell pipe tobacco. And in that case, what I would suggest that you get is either Condor Ready Rubbed or Condor Long Cut. Condor Long Cut's a flake. That means that it's like a, an, oblong block of, an oblong flake of tobacco and you rub it in your hand and just put it in your pipe. Or you can fold it in half and twist it so it's all sort of loose. But what I, what I would suggest you do is rub it in your hand. When you're putting it in your pipe, don't pack it too tightly. That's a big mistake that most of us have made, and I've made it today. What we normally say is, put some in, so your pipe's about three quarters full. And then press it down with the finger, but only lightly. Your first press should be the touch of a baby, they call, we say. Second, touch of a woman, and then touch of a man. So the heavier press is always the last press. But even then, you don't need to press it too much. There are other ways to fill the pipe. I mean, what I just do is put the tobacco in and just press it down and judge it by... Um, what I can feel of the tobacco so that I know it's not too tight. When you first start smoking, you'll be tempted to puff away quite hard, but I suggest you try to not to do that. That you light the pipe, um, then let it go out, possibly and press down just to even off the tobacco and then light it again. And when you light it, don't worry about keeping the light going until it's well lit. And I'll show you what I mean. Now I've gone on there um, several puff, puffs to light it and I'd still do some more. The main thing is to make sure it's lit all round if you can. And then just take it into your mouth with a sip. And let it come out. The nicotine's absorbed through the lining of the mouth um, and through the tongue and you can do what we call retrohale which is to expel the tobacco through your nose rather than out of the mouth. One of the advantages of doing that is you get a different taste of the tobacco, you get a, a more information about the smoke because you'll know from having, if you've ever had a cold, if your nose is blocked, your taste in, in the mouth isn't as good as it should be. Because a lot of what we do, a lot of taste, is through smell as well. But you notice I'm not puffing all the time. I'm just puffing enough to keep the pipe going. If the pipe gets very hot, then just put it down and let it go out and light it again. If your tongue begins to burn, you know what we call tongue burn, it feels sore, then either stop or slow down your smoking. One of the great temptations 
is to buy yourself too many pipes to begin with and too many different kinds of tobacco. There's nothing wrong in buying pipes. I mean, you'll need, some people would say, a pipe for each day of the week. But I would just say two or three pipes so that you can allow one to rest, smoke one, and so on. And tobacco, the only, the only reason you need to buy different tobaccos is to get a different experience of the of type of tobacco. For instance, there's, there's Virginia, there's Burley, there's all different types of tobacco, and they're all blended in different ways. What I suggest you go for is an English blend. That's usually um, Virginia, Latakia, and some Oriental in it. Um, Peterson makes some very good tobaccos. But I, I would really suggest that you read up about them and not, not get too strong a tobacco to begin with. A mild tobacco will give you perhaps <coughs> an even better experience of taste and of, of getting used to different tobaccos. The reason I smoke flakes a lot is because they tend not to get as hot as rubbed tobacco. They tend to be a darker and a stronger smoke. Now, I'm one of the people who doesn't get a nicotine hit, so I'm very unlucky that way, or lucky, depending on which, which way you see it. But there's going to be a time with any new smoker when you get the effects of nicotine and you, your head starts spinning and you feel maybe sick. What I suggest you do is that you eat some chocolate. That helps. Um, and not, not smoke again that day. You know, just... If you're going to smoke, I, I'd suggest you smoke after a meal, after you've eaten something. Don't smoke on an empty stomach until, you, until you're used to it. What you're going to need as well as pipe and tobacco is a box of matches or a lighter. And matches are very good for lighting pipes. You're also going to need some pipe cleaners. Those for if you can hear the pipe gurgling or if you are beginning to get a bad, the, some flaky little pieces of tobacco coming up to your mouth, you just put the pipe cleaner in and pull it out. Um, and then when you finish smoking as well, clean the pipe. Just run the pipe cleaner through a couple of pipe cleaners until they're clean and wipe out the, the bowl with um, just a tissue. You don't need to clean the bowl as such, but just to make sure there's not a lot of ash and that in it. A lot of people will turn the pipe upside down and shake it to allow the ash to get to the sides. That helps to build up cake, that black deposit on the pipe, which stops the pipe burning out. although you needn't really worry about that. The other thing that you can get is a tamper, and there are plenty with uh, pipe tools on them. That one's for scraping the pipe around the bowl. That one's for easing the tobacco if it's too tight or too... Um, when, you've been, when it's been smoking down, you sometimes want to stir up the ash and dump it out, or um, you want to break through the crust that forms if you're smoking a very heavy black tobacco.
There are people who will tell you you shouldn't need to light your pipe very often. You should light it and try and get into the habit of lighting it so that it burn, continually burns. I don't see why you shouldn't light your pipe as often as you need to. There are some times when I can smoke right through a pipe with only lighting it once. There are times when I light it maybe 20 or 30 times. It doesn't matter. There are all sorts of suggested rules um, that have a basis in good sense, but they shouldn't become rules that bind you. How you smoke a pipe is the way to smoke a pipe. But I suggest that when you're smoking, you also look at videos on YTPC. Mutton Chop Piper is especially good. As you can see his videos, he has advice on all sorts of things, like tongue burn, like different ways of smoking. Um, what most of us like about smoking is that we can contemplate, we can think while we're smoking. We don't have to be doing a lot just allowing our mind to go over either problems of the day or, or anything. And that's one of the joys of smoking. It relaxes you. It's the safest way to take tobacco, I think. Um, certainly in the reports that I've read, um, pipe smokers... Um, the main report that condemned tobacco smoking, cigarettes and that kind of thing, admitted that pipe smokers tend to live a year longer than non-smokers. Now that's not because the tobacco is good for you, it's because I think that we learn to relax and so we get less stressed. Um, there are always risks with smoking. With a pipe, you don't inhale, or you shouldn't. Some people will tell you they do, well that's up to them. But you still can get lesions in your mouth, or in your nose. You know, you, the risks are still there, but they're not, they're not that great. What I would say to you is, don't smoke cigarettes. Don't smoke, don't vape. Because if you're using a vapour, what you're doing is getting li uh, steam into your lungs. And that's not, we don't know the results of that. They haven't been around long enough to um, be, be declared safe. People will tell you it's safe and a good way to smoke, but we don't know. The other thing is try to find somebody else who smokes, who lives near you. Or if there's a pipe club near you, so that you've got somebody to smoke with, or, or so that you've got somebody to exchange advice with. But also contact people on the YTPC. They'll always be pleased to help. Now usually you can buy tobacco anywhere in the world, online. The problem is from buying it from America is that you've got to get it through customs, otherwise you pay duty on it. Um, if I buy from America, I tend to buy from a, a shop called Cup of Joe's simply because I've had none of their tobaccos stopped. Um, they've always got through. But there are particularly good pipe shops in Germany and in England. Um, you'll find those on the web and, and <coughs> Um, CQ Tobaccos, My Tobacco Shop, um, the Edinburgh Pipe Shop, 
they're all good to buy from. Um, you, you can find those by putting in tobacco pipe shops, you know, on, on Google. I suggest if, unless you're the people you're living with are quite happy that you smoke outside. It's difficult in winter, but if you've got a shed somewhere, then that's okay, or just wrap up well. It's still nice just to smoke, sit in a chair and pop away. Now I'm aware I'm going on too long, but that's, that's very basic. Um, suggestions for you. You've got my email address and I suggest if you want to know more then either email me or anybody on the pipe um, YTPC. So I'm going to stop there and say if you do start I hope you enjoy it. Pipe smoking is as much an art it's a hobby, almost. And I call it an art, because there's, there's an art to pipe smoking. So don't give up straight away. If you've got problems, try and find the answer to that problem online. You know, like I said, if you get a lot of tongue burn, there are videos online that tell you what you're doing wrong or what can help. Um, so we stop there and say all the best.